This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Dobre den. Welcome back to Nine Hole Reviews. Today we look at the Czechoslovakian VZ61 Scorpion, a caricature of a machine pistol, and what we consider a total meme gun. All of this with contributions from our friends at Polliner Tactical, Bloke on the Range, and Forgotten Weapons. The Scorpion has a far more interesting background than some realize and has seen multicultural service, even for organizations with questionable values, and ironically, made its way into an icon with Western pop culture. The Scorpion was developed by Miroslav Rybarsh and his engineering team in 1958 to 1961 in Czechoslovakia, and is often considered as one of the first widely fielded personal defense weapons or PDW-styled firearms of its time. The Czechoslovakian Ministry of Interior, or their version of the FBI or KGB, made a request for a weapon in 7.65 Browning caliber, aka 32 ACP, that weighed between 1 to 1.2 kilograms, so less than 2.6 pounds, with a 100 meter effective range that could be select fire and a pistol size package. Nick named the Scorpion for its upward folding stock resembling a scorpion's tail. The VZ61 is a direct blowback 7.65 Browning firearm that takes 10 to 20 round magazines. While the closest thing up to this point was the automatic Schnellfeuer C96 Mauser broom handle with a stock, it was not nearly as concealable, it was clunky, relatively fragile with its stock holster, and slower to deploy. In the 60s, the Scorpion was very much a state-of-the-art PDW. All of a sudden, there was a concealable, effectively controlled, quick deployable machine pistol that was quietly suppressible with a naturally subsonic cartridge. Although the 7.65 or 32 caliber cartridge is grossly underpowered for today's standard, this was specifically dictated by the Ministry of Interior because it was a standard pistol cartridge for the Czechoslovakian security forces and could be easily sourced for special security activities, what we now affectionately refer to as hood rat shit. It was designed for security personnel, tank crews, rear echelon troops, special operations operators, and paratroopers to wear as a holstered firearm and deploy as a close-range engagement weapon. The strength of the Scorpion comes from its ability to deploy controlled automatic fire in a very small package, as Ian from Forgotten Weapons demonstrates. You can actually control that thing! The Czechoslovakian engineering team was able to implement the light cartridge coupled with a clever firing rate reducer mechanism that further helps control the tiny firearm during full auto fire. With the animated schematic next to the slow motion footage, notice how the bolt stops in the rear while the counterweight traverses a pistol grip and trips the bolt latch. Also, we can see the rearward latch that holds the bolt open to slow the firearm's cyclic rate. The VZ61 uses a space-saving design of the bolt sleeving over the barrel. With only a single captivated pin to take down, the Scorpion is extremely easy to maintain and clean. What looks like a communist bloc version of the Gangster Tech 9 was actually quite the thorn for Cold War Western nations. Ow! I hate this gun. Czechoslovakian paratrooper used it as a primary issued weapon. Yugoslavian security personnel also produced a domestic version. The Soviets exported sanitized versions of the VZ-61 to Bada Meinhof for the Red Army faction terror cells in the West. The IRA in Northern Ireland employed Scorpions. In 1978, the Italian left-wing terror group Brigate Rosse killed a politician during an ambush. One of their members used a Scorpion. Italian mafiosos nowadays are still found with scorpions. This VZ-61 was recovered in Baghdad by a US service member. In 1998, a dead North Korean spy was found on a South Korean beach with dive gear and a Czechoslovakian VZ-61 scorpion. And yes, 
That's what the internet looked like in 1998. The VZ61 is still in production using original tooling in a semi-automatic civilian version by Czech Small Arms or Checkpoint out of the Czech Republic and also the M84 Yugoslavian copy by Zastava in Serbia. Our Slavic colleague will now give us a brief preview of his VZ61. Main features. It has magazine, magazine removal button, trigger, selector. Oh, it's on safe, blocks the slide. It's on semi, works the slide. It has foldable buttstock. It has front side, rear side. Two cocking serrations. It ejects upward. When magazine empty, bolt stays back. When they design this gun, has feature semi-automatic, has safety and fully automatic. Unfortunately, this one has neutered. Uh, bolts cut off, no shoot automatic. But still, it's nice. We evaluate the Czech-made semi-automatic version of the VZ61 with a thicker threaded barrel able to accept the standard US half by 28 suppressors. The rear sights are adjustable for 75 meters and 150 meters. And since owning a Scorpion semi-automatic only makes so much sense, we decided to give it even more sense and test it in Imperial Rangers at 50 yards and 100 yards. Both windage and elevation are adjusted with an offset front sight pin which should tell you how much long-range accuracy are expected from these things. Even though I have a stock on this, when I tuck it really close, I actually get worse of a sight picture from the notch sights. Even Kalashnikovs, you have the sights all the way up here, so you could actually properly focus on the sights. So for precision shots, as much as precision as I can get from it, I am going to shoot it with the sock collapsed, pushed all the way forward, like so. Mind you that the initial request was to have a weapon with an effective range of 100 meters. The Scorpion Zero is at 1.8 inches high at 25 meters with a 4.2 inch group using Fiocchi 7.65 ammunition. All 20 shots from the Scorpion landed on the upper torso at 50 yards. However at 100 yards we only got 65% hits on the paper. While this may seem abysmal, the firearm was designed as a compact offensive weapon for automatic fire, and close hits do cause people to take cover. Quite frankly, if you decided it's a good idea to stand in open ground outside of cover with an assailant shooting at you within 100 meters, maybe you do deserve to be shot by a 32 ACP projectile. The Scorpion is small. Very small. If we compare Scorpion to a standard handgun, we can see it's smaller, and half the weight. It makes sense over this capitalistic nonsense. Since the US version of the Scorpions enter the country as a pistol, the dovetail in the stock is not machined. Once complete on the ATF approval form 1 to SBR the firearm, one must use an adapter. The result is an even floppier wire stock that is too short and does not engage the curved base for a solid purchase. So, see how there's this movement? The stock doesn't actually sit in place at all. It's just loosely sat there and when you get it to the full extended position, there's more extension to it. So when I'm shooting this, I'm trying to torque the gun up to get the stock to a full extension point. So I'm torquing the gun up, I'm pressing the stock into my shoulder, I'm torquing the gun up. This is why Josh always looks like he is experiencing a stroke whilst firing this weapon. And I'm like using my chin to keep it pinned in place. On the rapid fire test, the floppy wire stock gave us an interesting dispersion. Generally not a bad grouping, right? I mean, mo uh, that one's not awesome. This is uh, just probably, if I had to guess, this is overcompensation for how the stock moves like this while you're shooting. Mostly alphas, one delta there, and then obviously the delta at the very bottom. Six Charlies, but you've got a 
bunch of vertical dispersion. So as we might imagine, vertical play in the stock generates vertical dispersion on the target. Not a bad group, including the, uh, the two furthest apart, that's of the order of six inches. And then shot as a carbine, a little bit more, yeah, it's not gonna be as capable as a proper submachine gun or a short assault rifle, but you're more likely to have it with you when you're bailing out of a vehicle than if you've got to stop and grab something from, from, from a clip in the vehicle. It's, it's on your hip, or they made shoulder holsters for these as well. Bloody modern production belts. It's an awful lot of firepower in not very much belt space. Basically, I love this thing. I love the concept behind it. Once I've got this one running perfectly, I'm gonna shoot it an awful lot. The Scorpion is a Bond villain's dream firearm, and ironically, it's dominated the Western pop culture scene. It's nicknamed the Clob in the Nintendo 64 GoldenEye game, and is the weakest, most inaccurate SMG in the game. But hey, you can shoot one in each hand. In 2019, PUBG players can also elect to spray their opponent with a scorpion, and developers actually captured the design characteristic pretty closely. This gun has like some of the best recoil of any gun in the entire game. I mean, it doesn't do that much damage, so like it's not broken or anything, but it's just very easy to control. In movies, Leonardo DiCaprio uses a VZ-61 in the Body of Lies as a proper VZ-61, doing CIA hood rat shit in the Middle East. Most notably, Keanu Reeves whips out a pair of blacked-out stock-free scorpions with 30-round magazines and barrel shrouds in the famous lobby shootout scene of The Matrix. As time went on, the scorpion had its next generation in 9x19 Luger as an Evo 2, but that market was already dominated by the MP5. So the Czechs went to beat Heckler and Koch at their own game, and they made the Evo 3 like a sleek modern UMP-esque firearm, and sold it at a price point that H&K should have sold the UMP for. So your options are a reliable Scorpion Evo 3 and 9x19 that shares nothing in common with its name's origin and doesn't even have a scorpion tail, or the original gangster, the Bond villain, the classy wood grip tarot blaster that is easily concealable and shoots a worthlessly expensive caliber. As a final anecdote, one of the original development engineers, Otakar Kalash, would make his point by tucking a scorpion underneath his jacket before he went to meetings, where he would pull it out and shock his audience suddenly with a concealed prototype. We can only imagine that the meetings went like this. This here, small, reliable, has magazine, has wood, perfect pistol. Only problem, very expensive here. Costs 180 Americanski dollar. But otherwise perfect personal defense weapon. Shoots quick, no recoil, small, concealable. I approve. True story too, he only paid 180 USD for that. The lucky bastard. Zero 